All right, we ready? All right, he's rolling, great. Good evening and welcome to the 2022 Temecula City Council Candidate Forum hosted by the Temecula Valley Chamber of Commerce. I'm Brian Connors, your moderator for this evening's forum. I'm the marketing director at Southwest Healthcare and I currently serve as a director on the Temecula Valley Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. Tonight's forum will focus on our local business community and how these candidates intend to improve our city and the local economy during their term. Each candidate will have two minutes for self-introductions, providing a brief bio. Candidates will then field three rounds of questions selected in random order. Each question will be asked twice in each round. Each candidate will have two minutes to respond to each of the three questions. Finally, each candidate will have two minutes for the closing statement. Tonight's questions were prepared by members of the Temecula Valley Chamber of Commerce Executive Board. Candidates will respectfully ask, we respectfully ask you to limit your responses to the time allotted for each segment. I'll let you know when your time is up and you will have 10 seconds to wrap up your answer. It's now my pleasure to begin this forum. Candidates will open with a two minute self introduction. Good luck to each of you and let's begin. All right, the first candidate to introduce themselves is Bill Weston, Bill. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. I'm going to start out by uh, introducing myself. Uh, my name is Bill Weston. I'm running for uh, Temecula City Council District 5. Uh, talk about myself. I grew up in Southern California. I spent five years serving my country in the U.S. Navy. I entered the service in California. Met, my, met and married my wife while serving in the Navy. I have two grown children. We came out here looking, we came out here in 1989 uh, looking for houses. Uh, we settled in Wildemar in 1990 and then bought a home in Temecula in 2003. I've been a part of this community since about 1991 when my wife started working for the city of, city of Temecula in the finance department. Both my kids went to preschool here. My daughter attended Day Middle School and Chaparral High School. I worked, through I worked my way through college while uh, working nights at Consolidated Freightways in Miraloma, earning a bachelor's degree in finance. I moved into freight management once I got my degree, and then after that I transitioned to insurance where I worked as an adjuster, manager, and a fraud investigator. I'm now retired. I serve my country, my family, and now I want to serve my community. I'm not a politician by any means. I believe my education, my military and private sector experience makes me uniquely qualified for this seat. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate that. All right, our next candidate uh, for uh, introduction is Brendan Colfus. Brendan. Hello, my name is Brendan. It's on here. There we go. That's better. Hi, Brendan Kalfas, running for City Council District 3. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, born and raised in Temecula. Been here since 1991. Uh, I graduated from Temecula Valley High School in 2009. Uh, after high school, I attended St. Mary's College on a baseball scholarship and graduated there with a bachelor's degree in kinesiology. Uh, after my college tenure at St. Mary's, I was uh, fortunate enough to be drafted into professional baseball by the Toronto Blue Jays and played a couple seasons with them. Uh, after my baseball career, I came back to Temecula, um, married my wife Mia, who actually we met at Temecula Valley High School back in 2005. We currently have five young children, three of which are in the Temecula Valley uh, Unified School District. And I'm currently a firefighter, paramedic, arson investigator out in Orange County. Uh, my platform is simple. Uh, public safety is number one, of course, police officers and adequate fire staffing. Keep the taxes low, get the homeless the help they need. So with, all, with my platform being similar to most Republicans and most conservatives in this city and in this nation, uh, what separates me from the other candidates I would say that I am a candidate that will fight for you against California regulations, California politics, and California mandates. I will fight to ensure no one's individual freedoms are infringed upon. I am here as the next generation to take the torch that, from the previous generation that laid a great down foundation for the city of Temecula and expand on that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brendan, appreciate that. Our next candidate up is Kathy Sizemore. Kathy. Thank you, Brian. 
And thank you to the Temecula Valley Chamber of Commerce for hosting this event tonight. And I also want to make sure to thank our city staff for accommodating us here in council chambers tonight. In 1995, a coworker of mine asked to introduce me to her son's friend, this guy that lived in Temecula. Now, I had been to Temecula once when I was 21 in 1993, and I, I heard enough stories about her son to make me think that maybe I shouldn't date this friend. Maybe it wasn't a good idea. But I did go out on that blind date with this guy from Temecula. Pretty glad I did, because eventually I fell in love with him, and I visited his hometown enough here in Temecula that I fell in love with Temecula, too. So I moved to Temecula in 1997, and we married in 1998. And since that time, we have been blessed with three amazing children that are growing into just amazing people. I am a small business owner here in Temecula, and I have a long history of service, leadership, and engagement with our community. Uh, serving the youth and families in our community with Boy Scouts of America and encouraging youth to pursue careers in STEM fields with FIRST Robotics has been a passion of mine. Raising my children in our city, I appreciated the important role that our city's parks, community classes, and special events have played in our families' lives and my children's upbringing. In 2020, I was appointed as commissioner to Temecula's Community Service Commission, and I'm currently the chairperson of the commission working to build community through people, parks, and programs. I'm running for Temecula City Council representing District 3 to help ensure that Temecula continues to be a safe, prosperous, and diverse community for future families of people that call Temecula their home. Thank you, Kathy. Our next candidate for self-introduction, Marianne Edwards. Thank you, Brian, and thank you, Brooke, and Chamber and uh, Chamber Board of Directors for, for having this opportunity here at City Hall today to talk to you. You know, I've loved Temecula for 34 years. We came here with our three small children in 1987, and we built our home here, and we've never left, and we never will leave. Um, our children had a great upbringing, and the whole time that we were here, um, we became what I call full-time volunteers, because in those days, that's what everybody did in Temecula. They volunteered full-time, uh, building the, the sports park. I mean, everything, everything that you'd expect, Little League and Scouts and church, and so it was a great place to raise our family, and it was my volunteerism that actually led me to where I am today. I was asked to run for the school board. And um, I did run for the school board. I'd always been active in the schools and I won and spent the next four years with a very steep learning curve. But it was amazing to see. We'd always taken our, we'd always appreciated our schools, but I think we sometimes take them for granted because we don't realize um, how much work and effort and red tape there is involved to run a school district. And I came to the council in 2005 <clears throat> and was so honored and have served on many subcommittees dealing with every issue that the city deals with. Uh, for example, I'm proud to have been the author of Responsible Compassion, which is our homeless program. It's been very successful and adopted by all of our neighboring cities. Um, so we all partner together to work on homelessness. And over the years, you learn that Temecula is successful because our residents are wonderful and they're wonderful to work with, they provide insight, they give us advice, and actually it's the residents that help us to build and support Temecula. Public safety has always been our number one priority and that will continue with our you know, 4 staffing, which means we have two paramedics on every fire engine. We've refurbished all of our, our fire stations and we've just added another new fire station. So it's a wonderful place to live, we love it here, and I've enjoyed being on the council and the mayor. Thank you, Mary Ann. Uh, next candidate, uh, Curtis Brown. Curtis? Uh, thank you, Brian, and uh, thank you to the uh, Chamber for um, hosting uh, this event tonight. Um, as I stated, my name is uh, Curtis Brown. I'm a 25-year veteran uh, of the fire service. I moved to, to uh, Temecula in 2007. I've uh, been a resident uh, here since. 
Um, moving here in 2007, having worked in Napa County, Sonoma County, now working um, in Sacramento for the largest fire department uh, in the nation, I think has given me um, the experience and uh, the know-how um, locally and at the Sacramento level to be able to represent uh, District 1 as a city council candidate. My platform um, obviously is public safety first because I think um, everyone has to feel uh, comfortable uh, in the city that they live. Uh, so police department uh, as well as fire department. Marianne uh, spoke about uh, the fire department. I was a fire chief in Temecula uh, in 2012 to 2014, so I'm familiar um, with the city uh, department heads, having worked with them, having sat on the dais as a fire chief. I look forward to uh, representing uh, the residents of District 1 as the next um, District 1 City Council member. Thank you. Thank you, Curtis. Appreciate that. Uh, next up is Jeff Shrapsinski. Jeff. Thank you. My name is Jeff Shrapsinski, and I'm running for Temecula City Council District 1. I've lived in Temecula for 12 years. I have two daughters, 16 and 12, and I've been married for 17 years. We've grown, uh, our family's grown up here. It's been a great city. I often tell people it's the most beautiful, most family-friendly city out there. And I'm here as uh, running for city council to continue to fight to keep it that way. I'm running as a Christian, and I'm running as somebody without any government experience, but with 20 years of successful sales experience. And because this is the Chamber of Commerce, and um, I want to speak to what I believe would be relevant as far as my business experience and how I could help the local businesses here. Uh, I've been in the same industry for 20 years. I've been promoted four times in that industry, from territory manager to sales manager to district manager, regional manager, and now vice president of a foreign manufacturer that has a sales team that sells throughout the United States. Uh, I, when you get promoted within that industry, that, that's usually because you're, you have a good reputation, and I do, amongst competitors, amongst peers, amongst my sales team, and amongst the business owners who I serve. I'm known for honesty, integrity, hard work, um, energy, compassion, and being collaborative and creative. And that is something I want to bring to the business owners here. I want to be collaborative and I want to be creative. It should be us working with the business owners, the business owners telling us as a city what they need to be successful and coming up with ideas together to help them. It should not be city council or the government telling the businesses what they need. And uh, I believe that um, that has been a form my entire life throughout uh, my business experience. I want to be creative. Uh, this money, this city does have money. The question is, are you going to save that money or are you going to invest that money to drive more business through the economy to help our businesses be more successful? I'm in favor of investing that money with our small businesses, investing that money in our community to grab more commerce for our businesses and our citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Next up for a two-minute two introduction, Zach Schwank. Zach. Great. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'd like to take uh, this time to thank the Temecula Valley Chamber of Commerce uh, for hosting this event tonight and uh, Brian Connors for uh, moderating it. We really appreciate your work here tonight. Uh, I'm going to use this time to uh, tell you a little bit about my family. Uh, Jennifer and I moved to Temecula in 2001. Uh, we didn't have any children at the time, but quickly recognized that Temecula would be a great place to raise our family. We weren't wrong. While Temecula has grown significantly since 2001, our city continues to be a regional leader in many ways. Jennifer and I have three wonderful children. Uh, our daughter Emily is a sophomore at UCLA, Jack is a 10th grader at Chaparral High School, and Owen is a 6th grader at Day Middle School. Uh, we appreciate that our kids are growing up in such a wonderful city. When they were younger, we spent many mornings at library story time, uh, city classes like Susan Miyamoto's music classes, and our local parks for playdates. We continue to take advantage of all that Temecula has to offer. We are invested in Temecula and continue to enjoy living, working, and playing here. I started my public service journey as a community services commissioner with the city of Temecula back in 2013. I served as commission chairperson multiple times during that tenure. My time on the commission gave me a solid foundation to build upon as a council member. Working with council members, fellow commissioners, and city staff has allowed me to form relationships that are instrumental in enhancing every resident's quality of life. 
it's no surprise that most residents are happy with Temecula's direction. In conclusion, being involved in our community is very important to our family. We donate our time, money, and energy to various nonprofits from Habitat for Humanity and Community Mission of Hope to Bike Temecula Valley. I've also served as a PTA officer and president at our children's schools. We love seeing new businesses open in Temecula and watching old staples evolve to meet the current market demands. We enjoy many events throughout our city and we are proud to call Temecula home. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. All right, our final two minute intro self-introduction goes to Lene Turley Trejo. Lene. Hi, good evening. <clears throat> it's a pleasure to be amongst you all tonight and allow myself to introduce myself and why I'm a qualified candidate for the Temecula City Council seat that will be vacated by our mayor, Matt Ron. My name is Lene Turley Trejo and I find it an honor and a privilege to be able to run for city council in Temecula and to continue to serve in the city that I love. I fell in love with Temecula 35 years ago when my husband and I bought our first home here in this beautiful community. We raised our four sons here. That love affair continues to this day. I have been involved in many leadership positions over the years serving in the schools, churches, nonprofits, and the city. Currently, I'm in my eighth year, serving as one of Temecula's planning commissioners. I have developed a keen insight on how our dynamic city works, an experience that has prepared me to be a city council member. I am running for city council because a family-first, safe community is the bedrock of Temecula. I want to ensure that that never changes. My three priorities are family values, public safety, and traditional education. I will always make family first decisions based on conscience, character, and courage, and fiercely support police and fire to keep our city one of the safest in the nation, a city that businesses want to locate in, tourists want to visit, and professionals and families want to move to. I want to continue our Temecula legacy. Temecula feels like home because it is home. Thank you, Lene. Thank you for those uh, great uh, introductions. Appreciate you all being here. Now we're gonna go into uh, three rounds of questions. We'll go into the first round. Uh, of questions. I'll randomly select your name out of the, uh, the bowl that I have here, and you'll have uh, up to two minutes to respond. Again, our timer here, and look for the uh, ending marker right there to wrap it up within 10 seconds. Thank you so much. All right, we'll go ahead, and uh, our first individual will be uh, Jeff Shrepsinski. Jeff, your question is, if elected to the council, what are your top economic priorities? First and foremost, my top economic priority, along with others that might be asked tonight, is to keep this city safe, clean, and family friendly. So without that, I think all of our businesses and all of our families struggle. So I am 100% in with supporting uh, first responders and police officers and to fix the homeless situation which in general, if you look at it over the last 10 years, has got worse, not better. And one thing we should have learned by now is that you need, you need to nip things in the bud. So I want to keep it safe and clean and work hard to make sure uh, that there's a no tolerance policy for crime or for homelessness. We need to get them the help they need, uh, but we need to not allow them to stay on our streets. I wanna invest in businesses. So. Like I've mentioned before in my opening statement, we do have money in the city of Temecula. We can invest back into the community. We can do that in a couple of different ways. We could do that by creating a major sports complex that would drive more people into our community. It would also keep people in our community rather than leaving to go to these sporting events, they would stay in our sporting events. A convention center would be another thing I would like to invest in that would again bring more people into our community and keep less people leaving our community. The third thing would be just to be creative and collaborative again. So bring the business together, 
let's come up with good ideas, whether it's to how to improve shop local, or whether it's about how to attract more venues, whether it's concerts, whether it's community events, whether it's kickoffs, whether it's um, auto car shows. The, the idea is, if we're running five events right now as a community, we can run seven and drive more business into our community, which would re, uh, create uh, more opportunities for our citizens. Thank you, Jeff. Our next individual, Lene, this question's for you. What do you see as the biggest obstacles to bringing businesses with quality jobs to the city? And what do you think are solutions to removing those obstacles so employers will want to locate here? Okay, so I think um, the biggest obstacles are one thing right now is we don't have a lot of land left in the city. And so that's one of the obstacles for bringing new businesses in. I think that uh, looking into what we can do regionally, and I think that should be um, a focus of ours. The city, there are different things that, you know, that we have that are regional, like the car dealerships, we have wine country, the casino, golf courses, but working on those kind of things to bring something that's regional that other communities don't have and, and can't, be, um, can't be done in other communities because it's a regional type of business. So I think that's, that's so the obstacle is land, of course. And then also um, trying to... Uh, to support Temecula Valley, so to support visit Temecula Valley, Valley as far as what they're doing for tourism, and I think um, anything that we can support with tourism is such a great, um, great income for us as a community, and that's something that's very regional for us. All the things that we have for tourism. So anything that we can do to support Visit Temecula and especially to keep our city safe in that. We want people to come here, but they're not going to come if it's not safe. They're not going to come if it's not accessible. And that's something we really need to work on. Um, we are working on as far as the freeways and as far as traffic flow. But if it's not accessible, accessible and it's not safe, they're not going to come. All right, thank you, Lene. Uh, next question is gonna go to uh, Bill Weston. Bill, your question is, briefly explain how familiar you are with the current innovation in Temecula, and what will you do to drive innovation in our city? Well, for example, <coughs> uh, the uptown, the old town, uptown, Jefferson re revitalization. Your mic, your mic, Bill. Well. The Old Town, Uptown, Jefferson revitalization in our city is probably the best example of our innovation in the city. Um, I would absolutely uh, want to increase uh, traffic through this area. I would work to bring a wide range of job opportunities for Temecula residents, because I think that's what this area would pretty much do. <coughs> Uh, work, work to increase local economic activity and expanding the city's, act, it, would, it would increase local activity by expanding the city's economic base. You know, in case, uh, in case you don't know this, you know, Apple is bringing 5,000 jobs to the Rancho Bernardo area. Once that happens, that's gonna, that's gonna be, be by osmosis, it's gonna be coming up here. So we want, we're gonna need something like a big employer to come in and fill, probably fill those jobs, like a Google or an Amazon. Amazon already has a presence in Temecula. We have a uh, transportation hub that is planned at the north, north end of Jefferson. <coughs> that would be, that would absolutely be vital for the area. I mean, that whole, that whole street can actually be a walkable street. We, convention center in that area would be great for bringing in businesses. I would want to promote economic development in order to draw areas like advanced manufacturing 
light industrial, biotech, bioscience, with software engineering. Like I said, Amazon has a presence here, and there's no reason why they can't bring any en engineers here. Uh, there should also be a discussion on how French Valley Airport would be utilized as well. All right, Bill, thank you so much. Our next candidate uh, question is Brendan Kalfus. Did I get that right, Brendan Kalfus? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Brendan, what are the top three business issues facing Temecula? And as a member of the city council, what will you do to address them? So with the city of Temecula, one of the biggest issues is that Temecula is in the state of California. California is the highly the most highly regulated state out of all 50 states in this great nation. And uh, what that means is that we have the most red tape to open a business here. And once you're open, we have the most liability as far as insurance and permits required. So the biggest thing for us here in Temecula is being in the state of California. Now, what can we do in Temecula to combat that is we can make the red tape as minimal as possible. We can make the permitting process as simple as possible. We can make the licensing process as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. And we can make it easier for those businesses that are even willing to do business in California, make it easier in the city of Temecula. Another business <coughs> issue facing this city is inflation and interest rates. Inflation is at uh, a high for the past a couple decades here right now. And, and I believe families and businesses are feeling that with gas prices, with food prices, just with everyday living prices. And a way to combat that is in our budget for this year, the 22-23 fiscal year, is we have an $11 million surplus. What we need to do as a city is look into giving back some of that $11 million to the family and citizens that work and live in Temecula. We could do that in a form of a rebate where we support local businesses, we give vouchers to those local businesses. That way, inflation, the, the businesses still have business from the families in Temecula, and the families are having a relief at that business. And lastly, a big business issue uh, in California is public safety. We have seen what has happened in California when lawlessness takes place. We need to keep a strong police force and public safety here in Temecula, and we do that by continuing to fund our police department. And those are the three issues I see uh, here in Temecula and how we can combat them. Thank you. Thank you, Brendan. All right, we're halfway through this uh, first round here. You'll see the questions come up again, but the names are totally random as selected in all rounds. <coughs> uh, question number five goes to Curtis Brown. Curtis, if elected to the council, what are your top economic priorities? Uh, my first economic priority uh, is ensuring public safety. Um, I think that if a uh, community uh, doesn't feel safe um, in the community that they, they live, uh, that also impacts uh, the businesses uh, in Temecula. I think it brings a negative image uh, to the city. Um, recently, there has been a lot of uh, negative uh, image uh, to the city, and I've heard anecdotally uh, that that has infected uh, uh, impacted uh, business owners. Mm -hmm. um, the city has been proactive uh, historically in um, putting together special teams, uh, one team being the homeless outreach team, uh, the other uh, being uh, most recently uh, the Metro team to be proactive um, to ensure that uh, the public uh, feel safe. Another economic uh, priority uh, is keeping uh, the revenues uh, here uh, in the city. Um, I think uh, the surplus uh, that was mentioned um, before is because Temecula is fiscally um, conservative. And I think uh, by giving money away um, that we need to ensure as a city and as a council that the money we give away uh, needs to be um, certain that we're getting a return on our investment. Um, I think giving money away without a return on our, on our investment uh, do does nothing more than perpetuate uh, bigger problems. Thank you, Curtis. Next up is Zach Schwank. Zach, what are the top three business issues facing Temecula? And as a member of the city council, what will you do to address them? Oh, thank you for the question, Brian. Um, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think top of the list is housing. 
Uh, we were at an economic for, uh, forecast a, a month or so ago, and uh, Dr. Thornburg was the uh, economic advisor and, and, and mentioned housing and how key that is uh, to economic growth in a region. Um, Uptown Temecula has been, uh, been identified here tonight. Uh, that's a key spot where we can have a little more density. We can have a nice, uh, nice place to uh, live, work, and play. Uh, I do think that that's important um, to add a mix of housing. Right? Uh, over the last few years, we've heard about affordable housing, attainable housing. These are things that are important to us, uh, obviously important to our businesses to be able to, to attract and retain uh, employees. So housing, top of the list. Uh, traffic congestion is, is another one. Um, I'll often talk to folks and, and they'll say, well, I don't really like to go to Old Town anymore. There's too much traffic. And so we have to figure ways to, to, to mitigate that. Uh, we can continue to do what we're doing. We're also expanding uh, transit in our region. Uh, I sit on Riverside Transit Agency and, and work closely with the, the board to make sure that we're, uh, we're going to be able to provide our area with uh, some robust transportation options, uh, making places bikeable and walkable. That also will help mitigate traffic. And then um, the third issue is, uh, and it was mentioned just a bit ago, it's a negative reputation and unpredictable leadership. And I think if you look to the business community, they want stability. They want uh, to know what their elected leaders are doing, how they're doing it, and how they're going to represent the city. So uh, when we make the news and we make the late night talk shows, uh, that's not a good image for our city. And I think that directly impacts our businesses, and it's very unfortunate. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Zach. All right. Next up is Kathy Sizemore. Kathy, briefly explain how familiar you are with the current innovation in Temecula and what you'll do to drive innovation to our city. Thank you, Brian. To borrow a phrase uh, that was used in the 2022 State of the uh, City Address, Temecula is home to businesses known as mavericks in their industries and leaders in innovation. Companies such as NPI, the National Process Industry, who is a leader in the aerospace industry, Utility Design Services, 60 Grit, IDIQ, and a success story from our city's very own entrepreneur incubator, the uh, TVE2, uh, the business Zebrasi. They are a leader in the life science industry. Our city's entrepreneur incubator, the Temecula Entrepreneur Exchange, or TVE2, is an important tool that we as a city can use to drive innovation in our city. Now my observation and understanding is that things have been somewhat slow over the past few years uh, at our incubator as we've gone through the pandemic and now as we're emerging. As a city council member, I'm gonna work to revive the TVE2 and to increase funding through partnerships and grants. Our diverse community is home to college-educated professionals with backgrounds in STEM fields. Being near universities such as UCSD and UCR, many of our homegrown youth are also pursuing degrees in STEM fields. As a city council member, I would love to work with city staff to conduct a talent survey of our residents so that we can better understand uh, more about our city's workforce knowledge, expertise, and experience. I believe having that information can be a driver that we can share with other businesses to encourage them to bring innovative in industries and companies to our city, which ultimately will bring employment opportunities for our residents that would help in the commute. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. And our next one up is uh, Marianne. For you, Marianne. Uh, what do you see as the biggest obstacles in, to bringing businesses with quality jobs to the city? And what do you think are solutions to removing those obstacles so employers will want to locate here? Well, I think first and foremost, employers who are responsible want to find a safe, um, family-friendly, livable community for their employees. And that's one of the first things that they're going to ask about. And when they do that, they're going to ask about how's the housing situation, what are the schools like? And housing right now is an issue in every city in the state of California. We don't have enough housing, but we seriously, we don't have enough um, broad housing. We need to cover all the different needs. We need entry-level housing. We need condos. We need apartments, um, you know, townhomes, single-family homes of all sizes. And the city has been diligent in working with developers to develop those types of housing. And not only that, we need places where our seniors can go. We need senior affordable housing, and we're developing those. 
We also need um, senior care facilities, and we have several of those coming into town. So the city does keep a pretty tight watch on the types of housing, and we're mandated by the state to provide those types of housing. So um, we have a variety of housing coming in right now, and we will continue to watch that. The second thing is, is maintaining a large and skilled employee base for those employers that are coming to town. What we often hear when I was director of or career technical education at the school district, we often heard that a lot of manufacturers and businesses want students coming out of school to have common or you know, um, regular skills. They need to know when to be on time, how to dress, how to interact with people. And then the employers want to train them. You know, they want to take over the details and, and train those employees. But if we can't maintain a broad base of uh, skilled employees, then employers are not going to come here. And finally, you know, some of the obstacles and issues, I think right now businesses are, it's the fear of the unknown. With the economy the way it is, and we don't know what it's going to be like, the city stands ready, as we always have with our economic development partner, partners and the city to help employers any way we can. Thank you, Mary Ann, and thank you to all for your first uh, round. We're on to round two now. Uh, again, I'll pull the names out uh, randomly here in a new set of uh, questions coming your way. Mary Ann, you're up first. Sir. <laughs> Public safety has been a strong focal point for Temecula over the years. What are some uh, actions we can take to remain one of the safest cities? Well, Temecula is continuously assessing our public safety, and a good example of that is we are able to direct our officers and enforcement where it's needed. For example, um, we were having issues in Old Town, and we were instantly able to direct nine officers to, to be in Old Town. They will be housed here now, so we're actually expanding the substation that is in City Hall to accommodate those nine officers full time, and it'll be their, their base. They'll come here and report there in the morning, and they'll stay here in an old town all day. So we need to have the ability to continue to place those officers where we need them. Zone patrolling is how our city works. They go to their zones and they stay there all day. And that may change, you know, we, it just depends. We're flexible in that, and that's one benefit of working with Riverside Sheriff's Department. The other thing is we maintain the same numbers that are used across the country for public safety, and that's one officer per thousand, and that's just a rule of thumb. And if there's ever a time when we think that is not being addressed, then we will increase those or we'll specialize teams. We have special teams that work within the Sheriff's Department or when with, within the Temecula Police Department um, that we can focus in certain areas, and that would be traffic teams, we've got the gang task force, we've got the Old Town hot team, homeless outreach team. So we're flexible in that area, and that will continue. And then also, we can't downplay public safety. Fire is the, is the equal component of public safety, and we are, we are determined to continue to improve our fire stations as needed by our firefighters. We, we, they have a very high priority with the city of Temecula. And also we're going to be adding a fire training city here in town so that we can keep them in town as far as training goes. So um, we will continue to keep two paramedics per engine, which means they can immediately go into a dwelling because Cal Fire requires two in and two out. If they want to go in to a fire, they have to have those, and we will continue to keep that high level of staffing. Thank you, Mary Ann. Next up is Bill Weston. Bill, your, your uh, question. As Temecula is near build out and home values are generally increasing as the city matures, what three methods would you implement to achieve affordable housing? That's a difficult question to answer because it assumes that the government involvement is a solution, which I don't think it is. The reality is that government involvement will end up exacerbating the problem. If you create a great example is college tuition. When the government got involved with student loans, tuition went through the roof and it can't get under control. Uh, when the government made easy money available, the cost of college became debilitating. 
maybe the best solution is no government at all. The more uh, anything government sub subsidizes, you'll get more of it. I think uh, market condition, I think uh, a basic market uh, supply and demand uh, is the best way to go. Thank you. Great. Great. Thank you, Bill. All right. Next candidate up for the next question is Lene. Lene, your question is, how familiar are you with the city of Temecula and how it conducts business? Please explain ways in which you have participated in city function or lended support. Well, <clears throat> the last eight years I've been a planning commissioner, so I have become very familiar in how the city works and especially in the planning department and how things operate that way. And it's been really a great learning curve for me to be able to understand, um, first of all, how well our staff works with those that come here to Temecula to start their businesses and making that process uh, as easy as possible for them. And as a planning commissioner, being able to you know, I'm kind of the color person. I care about colors in Temecula and how it looks since I'm the only woman on the planning commission, but I do think that's important. And so there's been um, all of that working together in making the city look good and be safe. And I've had an opportunity to be right in there making those kind of decisions. I really appreciated that. I've been really intimately involved with it. And also, um, as a citizen here and as a resident here for as long as I have been, I have been working with the city in other areas too. And so I feel like I really understand the city and how it works. And, um, and I'm grateful for that. Thank you, Lene. All right, our next uh... Next candidate up, Kathy Sizemore. Kathy, question for you. The Temecula Valley Chamber of Commerce and the city partnered together to promote a shop local program. What ideas do you have to help and encourage people to shop local? Thank you, Brian. On average, for every dollar you spend at a local's business, 67 cents stays right here in the community. 44 of those cents go to the business owner to pay for their, the business and uh, employee wages, and another, the other 23 cents gets reinvested right here into other local businesses. Shopping, dining, and playing local is an incredible way to connect with and support our community. As a longtime business owner and current member of the Temecula Valley Chamber of Commerce and the Shop Local Committee, I know just how important shopping local is to the economic res resiliency of our community. As a committee, we have been focusing on the development and implementation of the Shop Local Digital Directory, where businesses can offer coupons and discounts to our residents uh, so that, and visitors so that they can save money while shopping, shopping locally. It's kind of like one of those old school coupon books, but it's gonna be on your phone. So you're not gonna have to lug that big book around with you. Uh, one idea that we have discussed uh, that I've shared with the committee is um, looking into partnering with local social media influencers that have a large and broad influence. I'd like to see us uh, reach out to these influencers and partner with them to promote our shop local program and our local businesses. Another suggestion that I've shared for promoting shop, the shop local campaign is looking into uh, doing something similar to the Money Match program that the city of Murrieta has recently done to distribute part of their American Relief uh, Act funds. Uh, residents and visitors can purchase gift cards online from them uh, for local businesses, and they receive an additional card for the same amount for free. So it's like getting free money. And it's been incredibly successful for their economic uh, development in their community, and it's popular with residents and visitors. Um, I believe that we could use some of our uh, grant money that we've received from the County of Riverside to pay for that shop local program, and that would be an additional way that we can encourage shopping local here in Temecula. Thank you. Great, thank you, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Our next candidate up is Curtis Brown. Curtis, Temecula is near build out and home values are generally increasing as the city matures. What three methods would you implement to achieve affordable housing? 
Yeah, the medium home value, I think, is uh, $800,000 um, in Temecula. And uh, for businesses to find workers um, that are able to afford and live here um, is a challenge. But I think um, over the last, uh, over last several years, um, the city of Temecula has uh, met or exceeded uh, affordable housing um, that was uh, brought on uh, down this, uh, from the state. And so, um, one, I, I think we need to uh, keep uh, local control. Uh, two, work with um, uh, residents um, to uh, basically um, connect them with where uh, the affordable housing is in Temecula. Um, I, I just don't think uh, within the, uh, being a city council member um, that it's uh, an issue that I need to take on, um, but in, ensure that the residents um, know that uh, there is um, low affordable housing available to them in the city. All right, thank you, Curtis. Next up is uh, Zach. Uh, your question, public safety has been a strong local point, focal point for Temecula over the years. What are some actions we can take to remain one of the safest cities? Yeah, thank you, Brian. Um, so I think it's most important to just recognize that um, we should just continue to build on and enhance local control. Um, we contract all of our services, whether it's with Cal Fire or Riverside County Sheriff's. But even though we contract, we have local control. Um, some of exa examples are the Metro team. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to direct resources, and I know uh, Councilmember Edwards has, has brought that up. We were able to direct resources to an area in our city. Uh, that's community policing. Uh, that's important to us. Uh, homeless outreach team has evolved. It's now, uh, it's the core team. So it's a community outreach, outreach, resource, and engagement. So we continue to involve, whether it's with CAL FIRE or whether it's with Riverside County Sheriff's Department. Um, we are a safe city because of the people that live here, I believe, um, and, and the services that we provide are, uh, are top notch. Um, so we'll continue to do the things we're doing now, to be honest with you. I think we're doing a great job and we should be proud of that. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Zach. All right, next up, uh, Brendan Kalfas. Brendan, the Temecula Valley Chamber of Commerce and the city partnered together to promote a, sh to promote a shop local program. What ideas do you have to help and encourage people to shop local? I think the biggest thing we can do as a city council to promote shop shopping local uh, would be online promotion via social media. Uh, Kathy Sizemore hit on it. I think partnering with influencers in the community to bring attention to those local businesses is one of the best things we can do to get entice people to shop locally. Let them know that every dollar they spend at a local business is, is paying for that child's little league uh, fees that year. They're, they're paying for that, uh, that family's school fees for that year. And uh, I think we, when we promote shopping local, it keeps the investment within Temecula. And we can do the online provo promotion via social media. We can also do it at events such as the Blind, uh, Balloon and Wine Festival. We can do it at country concerts, sporting events that we have in the city, promoting that shopping local uh, and staying in Temecula. Uh, another idea that I have for shopping local would be partnering with local agriculture businesses and local farms to partner with schools and sporting events that we hold here in Temecula and bringing their their food and the, the healthy food that our kids deserve to those schools and to those sporting events. That way, it's a full circle with our uh, local agriculture here in Temecula. And I think, again, the best thing that we can do as a city council to promote shopping local, again, is just to get the word out there, do weekly features through our Chamber of Commerce and through other business groups, showing that the small businesses that we are supporting as a city and showing the effect that, that when we shop locally, the impact it has on our families and our community. Thank you. Thank you, Brendan. Okay, our final question in round two goes to Jeff. Jeff, how familiar are you with the city of Temecula and how it conducts business? And please explain ways in which you've participated in city function or lended support. Well, I'm not a government employee. So I'm not 100% familiar with uh, Temecula business, but I am familiar with business. In general, the city works like a business. It has to collect revenue, it forecasts expenditures, it creates budgets, and then the city council has to um, approve those 
budgets to make sure that they fit what the community is um, looking to do. So the city council basically sets uh, the direction with the city manager. Uh, I understand that we have, uh, we are fiscally conservative and we do have reserves. Uh, I do have 20 years of business experience dealing with net contribution, cost of sales, cost of employees, uh, cost of product and um, driving additional sales to increase additional revenue. And that is what I am about. So um, that might be a difference between me and other candidates. I believe you can be fiscally conservative but you can still take the money that you're, um, you're, in, you're taking in and then you can drive it back into the citizens, you can drive it back into the community, you can drive it back into the businesses. And if you make them successful, if you make your citizens successful, if you make the city beautiful with infrastructure, more people will come, more people will spend, more people will be successful and that's how you grow the economy and that is how I would work um, with Temecula Business and the city and how it conducts its business. Great, thank you, Jeff. All right, on to our final round of questions. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and start. And question number one goes to Jeff, you're up again. <laughs> See, it's totally random. <laughs> Jeff, what experience have you had in dealing with legislative issues as well as negotiating with elected officials and agency, agencies at the county and state level? Let me see if I can get creative with that answer. <laughs> okay, so that answer is gonna be none. I've had uh, no experience with business dealings with state legislatures. Um, however, I do have, I have done 20 years of business experience and uh, working alongside manufacturers, price negotiations, sales, discounts. Um, you know, we're, I work for a flooring manufacturer, we make large purchases, so we obviously have to negotiate with that. Uh, when we sell to our business owners, we have to negotiate with that. When we sell to our retail sales associates, we have to negotiate with that. So I do understand, again, the process of city council government as far as what it's, what it's about. Uh, what I can bring to the table is that I've had that experience, and it's about working together, working uh, in collaboration, but also finding, uh, finding honest people that are interested in doing business with integrity, I'm also very familiar with people coming in with budgets and then doing change orders based on inflationary things or whatever they see on the job site. So I think it's important that I'm aware of that and that I, I, I would take a strong line that when you bid on something in the city that you need to stick to that bid. And if we do that, I believe that would help us with um, being able to improve infrastructure. It'd help us be able to spend our money uh, more wise, get more out of our money, and it would better the community uh, with that type of negotiation. All right, thank you, Jeff. All right, next up for our next second question, our final round, Kathy Sizemore. Kathy, in these economic times, um, are there any budget categories in which you would like to see city spending increased, decreased, or eliminated? And how would you prioritize the city's spending and why? Thank you, Brian. Having served as a commissioner in the Community Services Commission, I've had the opportunity to receive presentations and participate in our city's annual budget for the past two budget cycles. As I've shared with staff at these annual presentations, I've always found that our city spending is consistent with our residents' priorities. Our city has always prioritized maintaining a healthy financial reserve as part of its budget, and doing so has allowed our city to weather previous economic crises such as the recession of 2008 and the recent global pandemic. Being prudent with our spending and saving, we have a balanced budget for our current fiscal year. I think the worst thing that a new elected official can do is to come in and try to make substantial changes without fully understanding the impacts of doing so. Uh, I would require to have facts and data before I could decide to really increase or decrease or eliminate any budget category. Uh, regarding prioritization of city spending, uh, after spending time walking District 3 and talking with residents, one thing keeps coming up. 
I would keep public safety as our city's top priority for spending. And I'd also look at roads and potholes. Boy, everybody wants to talk about roads and potholes when you walk around the community. <laughs> Listening to our residents, I would add maintenance and repair of our roads and filling those potholes as an additional top priority for our city spending. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Kathy. All right, question number three goes to Curtis. Curtis, the Temecula Valley attracts a large amount of money in visitor spending. How would you support and encourage our local tourism industry growth? Um, um, earlier um, this year, Governor Newsom, um, when the pandemic was over, um, had a commercial that says uh, California was uh, back open. And during that uh, commercial, um, Temecula was highlighted um, a few times. Mm -hmm. And so I think that um, we need to piggyback uh, on uh, that uh, at least California or national attention um, that we got from that commercial is to continue to market um, the city in ways uh, like that. So I work with um, not only uh, the chamber, but also work regionally and statewide to promote uh, city, um, the city of Temecula and the things that it has to offer um, to tourists. And that goes back to uh, my first uh, priority, uh, which is uh, public safety and ensuring that when the tourists um, get to Temecula, that they're uh, know, first know that they're coming to a safe city, and then two, know that they're uh, welcome here, regardless um, of who you are, you're welcome here. And I think um, by doing that, one, advertising, and then two, uh, ensuring that folks know that when you come to uh, Temecula that you're going to be safe and that you're welcome uh, will help with that. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Curtis. Question number four goes to uh, Brendan Kalfas. Brendan, in terms of economic development in the city, what are the greatest opportunities and challenges over the next three years? I think with every challenge becomes an opportunity. So I'll start with the challenges and with each challenge, I will present an opportunity. I think a challenge that we have is the amount of expansion that we have uh, coming to Temecula and that continues to uh, happen in our city. A big thing with the expansion uh, would be, for instance, the high density housing that is going next to the Pat and Oscars um, restaurant right there. With that high density housing right there, that's at one of the busiest corners in Temecula. So what are we going to do, right, with the expansion comes opportunity. So we have an opportunity to expand the infrastructure and expand the roads. Another one, uh, a challenge that we have over the next three years is inflation. So inflation is, is continuing to rise and it's continuing to take a toll on the families and the businesses in our beautiful city here. But with that challenge becomes another great opportunity. And I just want to hit on, uh, again, the... the um, the return, what I was talking about with the inflation uh, reduction or the, the inflation uh, relief program, I should say, is it's not giving away money without any return. I want to clarify that that money would be used for vouchers that are specific to our local economy and local businesses. So those vouchers that we would give back to the citizens that are already taxed at an extremely high rate due to living in California would be for local businesses. That way we are reinvesting in the community. And the third challenge that we are facing, again, being the state of California, is the lawlessness that comes down from Governor Newsom and from the top down. He continues to push laws that release criminals on early release. He continues to release criminals on uh, early bails. And we will have these, these things that come down from the government in California, and public safety will remain a top issue for Temecula. And what we can do as the city council is ensure that our police force is strong, ensure that they are fully funded, and ensure that Temecula remains a safe city for years to come. Thank you. Great, thank you, Brendan. Uh, next question goes to Lene. Lene, what experience have you had in dealing with legislative issues as well as negotiating with elected officials and agencies at the county and state level? So, uh, first of all, my first experience with legislative issues was as a PTA council president here in Temecula. And we went to Sacramento and um, 
fought for teachers and and kids and parents in in uh, Sacramento. It was pretty eye opening. So that was a, a really great experience for me to learn kind of how that works. And as far as with the city and legislative issues, um, I've had the opportunity on the Planning Commission. So there's four commissions in Temecula and the city. And the Planning Commission is really the only commission that we make decisions that don't have to go to the city council. And so we make decisions, unless they're legislative, then they need to go to the city council. So I've had the opportunity to counsel with city council members in that um, realm as far as any legislative issues that have come to the planning commission. So that's been my experience, and um, I look forward to having more experience with that. Okay, thank you, Lene. Next up is uh, Bill, Bill Weston. Bill, in these economic times, are there any budget categories in which you would like to see city spending increased decreased or eliminated? And how would you prioritize the city's spending and why? Well, things that I, I would want increased and public safety. Um, normally, I think we we're pretty good if it, under normal cir circumstances, but I don't think these are normal circumstances. We have crime run running rampant because it's not being prosecuted. Um, people are being let out of jail. Um, I think we can, we may not have to, like, we don't necessarily have to increase the police force, but we can do other things like the use of code enforcement, uh, the volunteer group. Code enforcement currently staffing is at five, but they're still reactive and not proactive. Um, the things that I would, I would basically want to, uh, maybe decrease uh, grants to nonprofits. Recently, we just had a $1, one, a $1 million increase to non nonprofits. I kind of have a problem with using taxpayer funds for charities. Um, and it really isn't, it really isn't, uh, uh, there's no rationale for the, for the number, the $1 million. So I probably want to reduce that. Uh, I know it's a contentious issue, but the Ready Commission. The Commission's existence depends on there being racism and inequities. Therefore, they'll look for it and find it wherever they can. It's a no-win situation. Uh, and as far as uh, prioritizing the city, I would, uh, I would go to roads, traffic and roads. I would go to uh, address the homeless issue and uh, improve police protection and public safety. All right, thank you, Bill. Okay, next question goes to Marianne. Marianne, in terms of economic development in the city, what are the greatest opportunities and challenges over the next three years? Well, I think the greatest opportunities are that we have one of the safest cities in the country. It's beautiful. Um, we have great residents here. We have great businesses. Everything, everything that you would want is family friendly. So um, that's what we have going for us. We also have a proactive city that works continuously on economic development issues. We have a very active economic development department. We reach out to new businesses. We go to the International Convention of, or Convention of Shopping Centers every year where we meet with every type of business you can imagine, and that's how we ended up with Cheesecake Factory and, and many of those others. So we take advantage of all the opportunities that are available to us. I think challenges, again, for you know, economic purposes are gonna, just gonna be the uncertainty. Um, we retain as much local control as we have, but we're still um, held hostage by the state of California and some of the pejorative laws that, that come down to us from Sacramento. So we are always prepared to take advantage of anything we can, and we're always ready to fight those things, those injustices that we feel are not reasonable that are imposed on cities. Um, the city was able to take our COVID funding, and it's required to be you know, given back to the community, and so we'll be giving that back uh, to the tune of $7 million this year and $7 million next year. 
and we have a pattern of taking um, using um, a special funding and grants to support businesses. So we look forward to doing that again in, in tough economic times if they come. The other thing is the city is a very strong, fiscally sound city. Uh, we budget five years at a time. So we look out five years, and our budget right now is balanced for five years. And that does take into account uh, any economic uncertainty that we have, and we pay attention to what the experts are saying in the forecasts. So um, I feel like the city is very well positioned to take advantage of every opportunity, as we always have, and to fight the negative things. Thank you, Marianne. All right, Zach, you're up. The Temecula Valley attracts a large amount of money in visitor spending. How would you support and encourage our local tourism industry growth? Great. Right. Thank you, Brian, for the question. Um, so first and foremost, we'll continue to be a partner. And we're truly a partner with uh, Visit Temecula Valley, with the Chamber, with our local businesses, and businesses that don't belong to some of those groups. Um, personally, uh, if you've seen my social media, I highlight small businesses that might be off the beaten uh, path. Uh, we live and work in this community, and we try to uh, spend as much as we can here locally. And I try to highlight uh, as many of those businesses as I can personally. And I know that's the city. We're continually uh, running social media, promoting businesses, making mm -hmm. sure that people know uh, a new business has come to town or an existing business is, uh, has renovated. Um, and the amount of ribbon cuttings that we have um, <laughs> demonstrates that I think we're doing a pretty good job. Um, so those are just a few of the things. Um, obviously, quality of life measures are so important. It's been touched on. It can't be overstated, uh, public safety, but just making your community a beautiful place to live. Um, tourist destinations are always nice places, um, and Temecula is no exception. Um, the last thing is, is really just going back to be, uh, being a welcoming community, um, it, one that values everyone. Um, there are many unique businesses that might not fit into our old traditions framework. Um, so making sure that we're not pushing people out, pushing businesses out of our community, and we're, we're circling, we're wrapping our arms around our entire community. Um, if you look at tourism statistics, uh, people from all over the world visit Temecula, and so it's important that we acknowledge that. Uh, we need to make sure that we're, opening, uh, we're open to a differing set of values and just generally making people feel welcome. I think if we do that, uh, the sky's the limit for Temecula. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. And thank you, everybody, for participating in those three rounds of questions. Now we'll move into our final uh, closing uh, uh, here. And you'll have up to two minutes for your uh, closing remarks. Again, I'll pull it out of the bowl here randomly. And our first candidate will be Lene. Thank you to the Chamber of Commerce and Brian Connors for facilitating this tonight's candidates forum and the city for allowing us to meet in beautiful City Hall. So to my fellow candidates, I have appreciated hearing from each of you and I understand now what kind of courage it takes to run for an elected position. So I kudos to each one of you for uh, making that decision. To the voters and my constituents in the city, even though I am running in District 1, the city council makes decisions for the entire city. That's been one of the hardest things for me as I talk to people. They're like, well, I don't live in your district. Well, but you live in the city, and we don't make any decisions for the districts. It's a tough thing. And I would just hope if anyone um, listens to this later on that they would understand that, that um, those that are on city council are making decisions for the entire city. I will fight for a safe, family-first city. I will listen to your concerns. In these times, a person with conscience, character, and courage are needed in our city council. I am that person. I will work with my colleagues in city council and city staff to make the best decisions for our city to keep it safe, family friendly, a smooth traffic flow, and the gem of Southern California, a place we can all be proud to call home. Thank you. Thank you, Lene. Next candidate with final remarks, Zach Schwenk. Zach? Thank you very much, Brian. And again, thank you for moderating this and thank you to the chamber 
uh, for, um, for hosting it this year uh, inside City Hall again. So over the past four years, uh, public service uh, generally has been difficult. Uh, we've seen division and frustration bubble up through our, our community, but through it all, Temecula has stayed committed to our core values and will continue to serve residents, businesses, nonprofits, and visitors faithfully. In Temecula, we consistently hold ourselves to a high standard. Uh, we have a beautiful park system uh, that continues to improve. We recently opened a new sports park and we're building a new a recreation center along Margarita Road. We also are adding miles of trails so residents and visitors alike can enjoy our city's beauty. Old Town, uh, Temecula, Pechanga Resort and Casino, the Promenade Mall, and Wine Country have helped transform our economy and put Temecula on the map as a major tourist destination. The Old Town Temecula Community Theater is a premier theater offering year-round professional shows, all while supporting local artists. We have countless top-notch facilities offering our residents and visitors many opportunities to enjoy Temecula. Moving forward, Temecula will continue to grow and prosper. I believe our community is successful because we work together. The city, the residents, the businesses, nonprofits all have one goal in common. We want to see Temecula be its best. I can tell you that I believe in Temecula. In the coming years, we'll continue to invest in public safety. We will continue to invest in infrastructure. We'll continue to invest in our youth, our seniors, and our special needs families. We'll continue to create the highest quality of life possible for all residents. As a part of the Temecula family now for the past 22 years, I've seen Temecula grow and change, and I'm proud to be a part of what we have become. For the last four years, I have faithfully served Temecula residents as their District 5 City Council representative, and I look forward to serving the City of Temecula for another four years. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. Our next candidate, Kathy Sizemore. Kathy. Thank you, Brian. I'm running for Temecula City Council representing District 3 because I want to be a voice for all residents in District 3. Being a City Council member isn't about only representing opinions and beliefs that are the same as yours. It's about listening and working collaboratively to make our city safe, connected, and financially sound for all Temecula residents. Our city is not the same as when it incorporated in 1989. And let's be honest, Temecula isn't the same city that it was the last time District 3 had elections for our city council representative in 2018. Temecula is no longer in a phase of growth and expansion. We're almost built out as a city, and we're entering a new phase, a phase of maintaining our city's assets to the high standard that previous leaders established while our city was growing. In 2022, we need city leaders that are engaged and focused on our city's future, not its past. Temecula needs leaders who actively engage with our community, are willing to listen and put politics aside to work for the good of the community as a whole. I am a proven leader in our community and our city's government. I'm ready to hit the ground running, leading on day one, by working with city staff, my fellow city council members, and most importantly, the residents of Temecula. In the upcoming election, I ask for your vote to represent you as your city council member for District 3. Together, we can ensure that Temecula remains a great place to live, work, and play for all residents. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Kathy. Our next candidate is uh, Brendan, Brendan Kalfas. Thank you, Brian, and thank you to the Chamber of Commerce for having us all here today. I believe Temecula is the best city. I was born and raised here. I am a product of Temecula. I am here to ensure that Temecula stays safe for all its residents. I am here to be a bridge between our diverse population. I am here to ensure Temecula businesses are able to thrive even during times of economic uncertainty. And lastly, I am here to ensure Temecula remains a family-oriented city for years to come. I look forward to building upon the foundation the previous generation has laid. I look forward to bringing new leadership to this beautiful city that I call home. Vote Brendan Kalfas, City Council, District 3. Thank you. Thank you, Brendan. Next up is Mary Ann. Thank you, Brian, and again, thank you, Chamber of Commerce, for giving us this opportunity. 
Temecula is no accident. From the first day as a city to today, it has taken meticulous planning and the fortitude to stick with those plans, yet be flexible enough to change as necessary. And Temecula has done that. We look ahead 30 years at a time. Our quality of life master plan is addressing that right now and looks out another 30 years. So we anticipate all the possibilities that are in store for Temecula and we plan ahead for those, making room for them, making compensation for them and budgeting for them. We rely on residents' opinions and residents' needs and wants to develop this city and the Quality of Life Master Plan has been the perfect example. It's citizens participated at every turn and answered surveys and came and talked with us. So we have a good feel for what is the Temecula residents want and it is our job to prioritize that way. Temecula is safe, it's beautiful, it's family friendly, and I think most unique is we've been able to retain that small town feel that we all know and love. And that also takes work. Um, it didn't happen by accident. So as we look forward, we demonstrate that, that we have that vision. We're looking at the um, Jefferson Corridor, which is gonna be very innovative. We're expanding our innovation in town. We're attracting those high quality employers um, we're looking to attract another uh, community college or another university to Temecula. So we're always thinking ahead. And, you know, to do this job, it takes a love of people, um, a lot of courage, and the love for your city. And I have been so honored to have served in this position, and I look forward to continuing that because experience does matter. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne. Up next, we have Jeff. Thank you. Temecula is the best city I've been associated with. It's the most family friendly, most beautiful city. I've been honored to live here for the last 12 years and, and raise my family here. I'm running for city council to help keep it that way. I want my kids to want to live here and I want them to have kids here and I want them to feel safe and love the city as much as we did and have a, a similar environment to um, how my kids grew up here. The fact is that over the last 10 years, although Temecula is still one of the safest cities in California, it has fallen in the ranks. Uh, the fact is that although homeless isn't as big of a problem here as it might be in other areas, it has got worse. And what we need to do immediately is fund, fire, and police enough to stop that trend. Hopefully you've learned from me today that I want to be collaborative and creative. I believe it's we the people for the people. I believe it's the business owners that should come to us and tell us what they need from the city to be successful. I believe it's the citizens that should come to us to tell us what they want to be improved on their city. I believe in common sense solutions to fix problems. I want to invest in the community. A recession is here. Inflation is here. Like businesses, some businesses will thrive. A city is very similar. The city can also thrive. But we have to thrive by keeping our city safe and beautiful. Therefore, when people visit, they tell their friends who also want to visit, and they also want to visit again. We want to be able to keep our community and our dollars in the city. We need to do that by investing in things such as a convention center and also a massive sports complex that rather than our citizens leaving to go to these events, our citizens are actually here as well as bringing other people in to spend more money on the city, in the city, and to create more successful citizens and businesses. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Up next, Bill Weston. Bill. Thank you, and thank you for the uh, chamber for inviting me here tonight. Um, in my career, 30 years long, I had to meet production goals on a nightly basis. Every time I had to go to work, I had people I had to motivate to get work done. When I was in the insurance industry, I investigated, evaluated, settled countless numbers of claims. I dealt with countless numbers of attorneys. 
I had to talk to everybody involved to be able to make an informed decision and bring, bring things to a resolution. I dealt mostly with attorney represented clients or you know, when it was fraud claims, same thing. Sometimes I had to use experts to resolve claims. Sometimes I had to coordinate the use of mediators. Sometimes litigation was unavoidable. But it was all about coming to an agreement. And I had to figure out that pathway to finding common ground. As a council member, I will be here to help solve problems, not create them. Unconstitutional lockdowns and mat and band-aids should never happen. I promise business owners will be my best resource for understanding the needs of the business community. Temecula needs someone with private sector experience. I am that person. As I said before, I served my country and my family and now I want to serve my community. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Bill. Curtis, time's yours. Thank you, Brian, for moderating. Uh, thank you to the chamber, then thank you uh, to hearing from all the other candidates. Um, as I stated in the opening, I've spent 25 years uh, in public safety. Um, I've worked um, from San Diego to the Oregon border. I've worked with uh, department heads here locally. I've worked with various elected officials, legislators, senators, uh, tribal uh, departments, tribal leaders, and I've even worked with uh, various governors in their offices as well as their staff. I think uh, my top priorities, public safety, quality of life, and traffic uh, concerns um, are the three priorities of the residents of the city. I've looked forward to um, November 8th uh, being the next District 1 uh, successful candidate. And I invite uh, the voters there to visit me at brownforcouncil22.com. Uh, email me, Mr. Curtis Brown at msn.com. We'll talk about any issues and or suggestions that you have to make Temecula one of the safest cities uh, in uh, the state, as well as uh, bring better quality of life and address traffic concerns. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Curtis. I got to say thank you to all of our candidates. Well done uh, this evening. And this concludes tonight's Forum. On behalf of the Temecula Valley Chamber of Commerce, thank you to each of tonight's candidates. A video production of tonight's forum will be available on the Temecula Valley Chamber of Commerce website, where you can find that at temecula.org. Good evening, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. So, let me, let me help you.